Hey, it's Les from the TV Dudes. This week, I was lucky enough to chat with actor Joseph David Jones. You've seen him play Connor Hawk on both Legends of Tomorrow and Green Arrow on the CW. Green Arrow just entered its final season, and we talk about what fun it was to join the family on that show, how he took a little break from superhero action to sing music over on CMT's hit series Nashville, and much more. It's a really fun interview, and I hope you enjoy. Hey, Joseph. Hey, how's it going? Uh, doing great. Thanks so much for taking time today. So, uh, Arrow wrapping into its final season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Arrow was the first big one out of the gate where I was calling friends of mine going, no, DC Television's got it figured out. This is great. This is Batman, the TV show. But it's just Green Arrow. <laughs> uh, just just was, was badass from the gate. Can you talk a bit about, I know you auditioned originally uh, for the role of, of Connor or John on Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah. But uh, can you talk a bit about your relationship to kind of the, the larger CW, DC TV universe or, or comics in general? Um, it's funny. My, my sort of role keeps changing as time goes on. Um, and, and now that like sort of storyline where I initially started off at is, is kind of hot, but just in a different timeline, you know, a different story, um, a different version of things. But it's funny, as you mentioned, like sort of how it started off and it was this, this Batman. I mean, it was, it was very inspired by the Christopher Nolan Batman at the time when it came out. But um, I wasn't sure when I started and I came into it. I was auditioning for Legends, but I was auditioning for this sort of character who always belonged in, in Arrow's timeline, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't know which tone to approach it with. I didn't know whether I was supposed to be more uh, comedic like the Flash or if I was supposed to bring that level of, of uh, darkness to it like Arrow does. Um, and and they, they when they did that episode of Legends, it was meant to sort of shift the tone to Arrow's tone. So I, I feel like I was always sort of meant to be on Arrow, you know? Yeah. And even in that Legends episode, they wanted it to feel like an episode of Arrow. So it's funny that like now I'm finally to sort of where I was meant to end up. Yeah, because I I do kind of if if there's a spectrum of uh of maybe fun and campiness versus like very serious dire stakes, uh I, I would put Arrow on one end and, and Legends on the other. And I, I love them both, but for, for different things. Yeah. Well, especially now. Yeah, and the idea of slipping a character between, you know, some of the things that go on in Arrow and then Legends of Tim Meow Meow is, is just crazy. And it had to be fun as an actor to to get to find your character's tone across those shows, which I think is it probably be a pretty yeah. rare thing for not many shows crossover quite like these two. Yeah, yeah, and it is a, <laughs> it would be a major crossover, uh, I guess, on Now's Legends. Uh, but it's funny, like they they were still figuring out their tone on Legends uh, when I first started the first season. So they tried they tried to have sort of this lighthearted feel with humor to it, but still have like sort of a dark overarching storyline. Um, and I feel like now they've they've just fully embraced. Ah, uh, like the the comedic <laughs> side and yeah. what's going on, and, and it's it's working. I mean, they found like uh, a religious fan base for this show, so it's been great. But um, for me, crossing over like tone wise, um, it wasn't the hardest shift because we kept that sort of arrow tone. Mm-hmm. The hardest thing was adjusting who this person was um, for this new timeline for this new show because they, you know, now he's he's sort of grown up with Diggle um, and has that sort of a, a military historian father figure in his life where he's not out trying to, trying to fill shoes and, and live up to this idea of a person and, and this idea of the arrow and everything you know he is someone who has grown up with family who is grown up and then been trained military-wise, who's been 
on tax commissions and everything like that. So he's very more, like, he's more structured, you know? He's more, I think, to me, focused and, and <laughs> it's weird to, to use Diggle as a man, but he, he's very Diggle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk a bit about, I, I know you, you kind of got the acting bug a little later uh, than most you, you came to it in college, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. Uh, and you were, uh, you were uh, at, at UK. Can you talk a bit about how you found acting or, or what the feeling was, not just that made you love it, but, but the first moment where you went, I'm going to, I'm going to make a turn in my life here and, and make a go at this. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's funny is whenever you sort of sign something that you're good at, that is it, it, exciting and fun, and like it really does sort of take hold of you. Um, I in college, I, ne- I never knew really what I wanted to be, and it, when I went there, I, I shifted majors like three times uh, in my first like two three years so I'd been there, and it's just like you're constantly finding out the reality of what your field is, you know? So I, I was, at first I was going there for pre-med, essentially, and I was going to be my major. And, you know, then, like, after experiencing maybe, like, a year into that, I was like, okay, this is where I want to go. Uh, then I switched to engineering because I had taken a career aptitude test and they said I was best suited for a career as a mechanical engineer. So I was in engineering, and, you know, I was just like sort of overloaded with, with classes. My course load was unbelievable. And I was like, man, maybe like, maybe this isn't what I want to be, you know? Um, and it wasn't necessarily because of all of the studying and everything. It was, it was mainly about, do I see myself doing this like 10, 15, 20 years from now? Um, and I'm working for like, you know, employers or something, uh, which is uh, where a, a lot of the people who I, was in school with were, were going or were interning at you know, right after college. Um, but luckily for me, uh, I did that competition sort of serendipitously, uh, and it, it came out of nowhere. Um, so I did this competition in New York, and you know, I had always been interested in acting. I always loved movies and everything. It never seemed like something that I could do. Mm-hmm. Until I you know, gave it a shot, tried, and then won the the competition. And, and I mean, we keep saying this. The competition is called like INTA, um, but it's like it's, it's it's more of a showcase than it is a competition. But once I did this showcase thing, um, and had like you know, hundreds of agencies and everything who were all trying to contact me afterwards. And you know, give me a fly out to LA and give me to like come to New York and all this stuff. Um, it really, it really got me excited about it. It was like, you know, I could, I could actually do this. Um, <laughs> but when I like initially came out to LA, it was sort of alternatively, you know, uh, I had taken a year off of school to give it a shot to see what I wanted. You know, and whether this slipped, you know, to see if this was the vibe that I wanted to go down. And, like, luckily, I had a, a good first year, and, like, both right off the gate and everything, because had I, had I not, had I, you know, still been trying to figure it out and figure out, like, what that year of education and all that stuff, in my first year, I don't know if, uh, if the bug would have, like, sank in and took hold as well as it did. But, like, having something that was exciting and interesting... And being something that I was good at made it feel like it was the right fit for me. So I'd say, like, maybe after that first year of experiencing that, like, it it really sank in and it really took hold. And it was like, there's nothing else I could do. This is it. Sorry, that was a boring answer. No, no, that's that's great. I, I Initially, I thought, you know, anytime I talk to anybody from the Arrowverse or <laughs> any of these shows, and I, I, I want to ask, like, were you ready for coming off of the stage or, or, you know, really emotional acting and then crazy stunt fight scenes. But honestly, 
<laughs> I think the break you took between Legends of Tomorrow's couple of episodes and coming back as Connor on Arrow, you went off to Nashville and and had to sing. It was was music always something that also interested you? And can you talk a bit about uh, getting to go uh, off and, and join that cast of Nashville? I uh, That show was, was one that I could always talk to my, like both my mom watched, I watched. I was a sucker for the oh, songwriting. Okay. I think a couple of your songs got written by Sean McConnell, uh, who's a great songwriter. I, I live in Texas. He, he works with some Texas artists. Um, can you talk okay. a bit about uh, getting to, to go off and work on Nashville uh, as kind of a nice break from, uh, you know, beating people with batons? <laughs> Nashville was an adjustment. It's funny because like, all of these shows are sort of an adjustment and then there's a learning curve with it. Like, I mean, I'm learning to take people down with these tally sticks and everything and learning, like, intense fight choreography in between the shoot days. Now, Nashville, I was, like, learning original songs and having to, like, learn them on guitar and, and go and record them because they, they, like, you have to know your stuff so many musicians watch this show and they, they look for, for shows and movies people are like supposed to be playing the guitar, piano, and like hands on in the right place. And all that. So like they wanted, they needed to make sure that I knew every song, note for note, lyrics for lyrics. And that was what I was doing like in between all of the shoot days. I was, so was like adjusting and learning to this shoe sort of acclimate myself to the Nashville process. Um, but no, I, I've always loved music. I think Nashville gave me a, a deeper respect and love for country music. But I'd always loved music. The funny thing is the competition I did in New York, um, I had signed with an agency in Kentucky. And the, the reason I initially signed with that agency was because I was looking for like a representation for a cover band that I started in college. <laughs> so, we, so I was there I was like you know playing parties and stuff like that but it was I don't know it felt like the right fit for for me when I when I signed on to Nashville the show was like the people were so great the show was so great uh, and looking back on it like I was like man like that was a really a really good show you know it was a, it was a family when I stepped onto it so I kind of miss, I miss the national days. I gotta ask, man, what what was y'all's song that brought the house down? <laughs> brought the house down. Um, God, I'd say my answer. Yeah. Oh, that's that's amazing. <laughs> it was, it was uh, <laughs> a bad, but yeah. <laughs> that's great. Oh. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so you were staying ready for, uh, or, or having to get ready for Arrow, uh, while making Nashville. Yeah, I get a lot of time left between Arrow and Nashville. Uh, I taken like, time off from acting to try and work on some of these projects that I was writing. Uh, so I took maybe like a good year where I didn't like I just. Told them no, like, I don't want to go out on any, anything. I just want to see what this is. Mm-hmm. Just try my hand and then try to develop some projects and see sort of what my voice, or what voice I can lend into, you know, to, to the industry, to what I make, everything. So I took a, a year to write some things and, you know, and I've been working on developing that while going back to acting on the show. It was, a, it was a good time to find my own voice sort of as a writer. There was an interview I read with you uh, in doing research where you, you kind of broke down your day on set and, and trying to fit in just, I think it was an answer to, to trying to fit in working out or, or staying in shape. But uh-huh. um, it, it reminded me both that an actor's day on is like, yeah, you have the super fun job, but it is some long hours and, and you still outside of those long hours got to fit in the prep you've got to do. You know, I think at the end of the like second yeah. time at the gym, you came home and like, oh, yeah. And then got to look at scenes for the next day and like, oh, shit, your actual homework yeah. starts then. I mean, you, you, I have to imagine you you've got to figure out a way to work in writing and working on your own stuff and, and you know, starting a another couple of 
very personal plate spinning while also making this return to that schedule. Uh, how how yeah. was that? <laughs> oh man, it's, it's 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 a tough road to travel. Let me tell you, um, it's funny because you know there's there's no real blueprint for it when you're doing this, and every single show is different with different schedules and different timelines. So it's like trying to figure out how to balance everything. Um, I wish I would say that I, I, like I'm doing this. This is how to balance it. Like I'm doing the the, the best job of all of this but really i just i don't get a lot of sleep <laughs> but uh now when you especially taking a show like arrow um there's no like i have no idea how long i'm going to be shooting for on any given day so there have been a couple of days where i've i've gone into the gym at 6 a.m because you know i had to go and shoot and and the scene that I thought was going to be like, or these scenes that I thought were going to be like eight, nine hours, ended up stretching to like 15, 16 hours. And because like you've already sort of strained your body to work out, I'm just like fading. And then, you know, surprise, they, they added in a, a, a fight scene into the scene because the new draft came out last night and now we're fighting <laughs> three guys. <laughs> so like I have to be sort of, physically on it now too and by the end of the day I'm just exhausted but I was trying to roll with the punches and being as flexible as you can and that's the best way to, to sort of balance everything out because it's it is a hard <laughs> it is a hard one but you know you gotta stay in shape you gotta stay sort of on it and you can't like I can't let any of those things sort of slip yeah just you know I assume you've got to just find moments to have a quiet minute and appreciate what you're getting to do or, or you would just get ground down by it. How do you kind of recenter that, that enjoyment when the, you know, when the hours can be long? You know, and it's, it's really taking full advantage of the times when we do have off. As luckily for me, it's like this, this show is, is it is an ensemble, you know, there's so many people on there. So not every episode I'm working you know, every single day of, and it's like when I have that time off to, to re-catch up and, and we sort of focus on the, what, what makes me passionate about all this. Uh, and having those breaks, they really they make all the difference. Thanks for talking to me about it all today. I Doug, getting to see you come back on uh, on Arrow, not just because I'm a sucker for weird-ass time travel stuff and multiverse craziness, <laughs> but but also just because you're, you know, I thought you were a great addition to future team arrow i can't remember whatever we're whatever we're calling this group now um yeah can't thank you enough hey, thank you so much Ryan. I really enjoyed it. have a great rest of your day The TV Dudes is an independently run podcast and a member of the Electric Sweater Podcast Network. We are exclusively listener supported. If you'd like to help us out, go to patreon.com slash TV Dudes. You can like us on Facebook and Twitter at TV Dudes. All the music for our show is by our friend and original TV dude, Gregory J. Amani Smith. To find out more about us, go to thetvdudes.com and electricsweater.com. I'm Grant Davis. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.